Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in today. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the power of Aurora HDR 2018. Uh, it's my favorite by far uh, in terms of HDR processing, having used HDRFX Pro and Photomatix quite a bit over the years. Once Aurora HDR came out a couple of years ago and I tried it for the first time, I literally never went back to the other products. And so I wanna talk about that. There's also an incredible special going on right now. And I'll put a link down below. And by the way, that is an affiliate link. So if you click it and, and purchase, I make a couple bucks. I appreciate the support. Your cost is the same. And in fact, you can use my coupon code, Jim Nix, and save 10 bucks. Uh, but the promo that's going on right now is uh, you get for free Trey's complete HDR tutorial, which is, I don't know, like five or six hours of uh, video or something. I don't know. Um, it's lengthy. Um, and he's also got a deep dive video. And you also get a bunch of sky overlays. So I thought I would do something here and show you how the product works. Give a little demo, show a few tips and tricks, and, and illustrate the power of this product. So let's get started. Okay, so this is a series of brackets I took in Italy. This is Vernazza. There's the middle exposure and the bright one. So it's a three exposure bracket. I'll go back. Dark, medium, and light. Um, and now the thing about it is those are boats and that's water. So by definition, they move. Now they don't move a lot. I don't even know if you can tell, but I can tell they've moved a little bit. The people have moved a little bit. But the good news is um, in Aurora, when you blend those, you can just check the de-ghosting option and alignment if you shot it handheld, which I did not. Um, and it'll line those things up. And actually, I think it does a really good job. So in this case, that's my finished photo. And now it's vastly different and it's very saturated, but to me, it's a very lively kind of place. And this is Italy after all. And so I wanted to illustrate that and really give it some oomph. So let me show you the before, and that's the middle exposure and the after. Let me walk you through my processing here. As you can probably tell, there's been some perspective correction, right? And there's also been a new sky added. I'll show you how I do that. Let's dive in. Okay, so here's the base HDR, three exposures merged in Aurora, as I said. You can see, again, there's the center exposure and there's the base HDR. Went through the tone mapping process, pretty basic stuff, fairly flat. To me, very natural looking, which is one of the things I like a lot about uh, Aurora HDR. Despite the fact that my end result is very colorful and vibrant, you, you don't have to do that, right? So that's a personal choice for me in this photo. I don't choose it in every photo, but admittedly, I like my colors. Um, so the first thing I did is I went over here to this little uh, tab, and this is on the base layer. This is a, a raw file, and uh, lens correction is what I adjusted there. So uh, that just allowed me to get that distortion out of the way. So it went from that to that, which if you look at this tower over here, the tower's kind of leaning, and it's all just kind of bulging, right, in the wrong uh, directions. And so now it looks a whole lot better. I didn't straighten the photo at all. I didn't even need to. I just went through and uh, did that lens correction. Um, first thing was the basic panel, and these were minor adjustments. Uh, you know, temperature, contrast, HDR enhance, which gives it a little bit of, it's kind of like a clarity slider to me. Um, I don't know if officially it's defined that way, but I think of it that way. But it adds a nice little pop. Um, then I went into the colors. Uh, and whoops, let me turn it on. Um, and I added some vibrance and some color contrast. So you can see I'm starting to get kind of that rich, colorful look. Um, next was HDR structure, which gives it a little bit of grit and, uh, for lack of a better word, crunchiness. Now, um, it also, uh, I don't know if you can tell, you may not on a video, but it's added uh, the structure because I just applied it to this whole layer. I didn't do any masking of that filter separately. It's applied it also to the sky, which is creating a little bit of a grain in the sky. I don't care because I'm gonna replace the sky, in which case, uh, so I just let it be. Uh, but otherwise, I would use the HDR structure selectively on its own layer and then mask it in where you want it. So just a thought there. Um, image radiance was next. To me, that's like a little bit of that romantic glow, which I like. Top and bottom tuning, simply because the bottom was too dark. And then color toning, uh, also known as split toning. And you can see what I did here. Um, I just went in the shadows and gave it a little bit of warmth. I think it was getting uh, maybe a little bit too blue. Let me see that before and after. Yeah, so I just kind of warmed up the shadows a little bit. Um, and that's my whole first uh, well base layer. So after that, I added a new layer. And this is where I get into the sky replacement. And so this might um, not look... Uh, the way you expect it to look. Let's see here. Um, so what I did is I just took the saturation down by 100 
and then I went into the tone curve and basically what I did is I, I what I'm trying to do is create a high contrast look to the sky. Uh, let me turn the layer on so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. Um, and so the tone curve allows you to do that by just squishing the blacks and the whites to the extent that you're just basically trying to take the parts that are white and blow them out completely and leave everything else kind of dark. Now, um, and I also took saturation down to negative uh, 100. Now this is a trick I've used in another video in Luminar. It's a little bit different here simply because um, you don't have the black and white filter and um, you also don't have a um, free transform tool, which I'll talk about in a second. However, you can still do this in um, Aurora. So I did the tone curve, as I said, right? So I just basically compressed it. So I got the sky as white as possible and everything else um, not white. And then I had to go in and do a little masking. And what that means is some of these areas over here got really blown out. I just had to erase it from there because I don't want the luminosity mask, which I'm about to create, to apply to anything except the sky. So basically, when I created that high contrast sky, I, I erased that high contrast from the rest of the photo. That's kind of what I'm talking about. Um, next thing was to go add a, uh, a new sky. Um, sorry. Actually, that's not true. Um, let me go back a layer. Um, the next thing I did is created a luminosity mask. So let me show you that. I'll say brush, and then I'll show you the mask. And you can kind of see the luminosity mask is just in the sky, and it's basically applying there automatically. I just chose uh, to create the luminosity mask uh, this way. You just go uh, click on the brush, and then click luminosity, and it'll create it automatically. Um, so that's, that's what I did, and then, I'm sorry, then I added a new layer, and this was uh, this plus sign and add new image layer is what I did. And when I added the new image layer, I went and grabbed a sunset sky from another photo of mine. So to be clear, this is not one of the skies that comes in the sky overlay pack that comes with the bonus offer that I mentioned uh, that you can read about in the link below. This is a different sky, just something that I've captured on my own, and I just have a collection of those that I've kept over the years, and I just keep them on my desktop so that when I'm feeling in the mood to get a little funky and put a new sky on something like this, I can just grab a new sky. Um, now, um, what I wanted to do is add some color to the scene because to me, the scene is very vibrant, but as you saw before, the base sky was not vibrant at all. In fact, this was, um, you know, an hour or so before sunset. It was kind of coming up on golden hour. There's not a cloud in the sky. I had, frankly, terrible sunsets uh, when I was in Cinque Terre, Italy, but hey, that's the beauty of this is you just go add a new one. Um, so it's art, just to be clear. I'm not trying to pass it off as real. Uh, I have no problem with replacing skies. I do think you should probably mention that if you're doing it, and I try to remember to do that myself. So um, here we go. So I added the new sky, uh, and then I went and added a new adjustment layer. And in this one, I just grabbed a preset. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Let me collapse the tone curve. There's a bunch of different... Um, filters in this preset, and this is one of my presets um, from my Road Tripper preset pack, which I sell on my blog for $10. There's a link down below. Um, if you want to buy it, that's great. If you don't, I'm not I'm not peddling it per se, but I've got a lot of different presets in here, and i got to be honest, I don't remember which one I used, but I grabbed one of these guys, and I stuck it on there because it gave a big bump to the colors, and I thought it looked quite nice. Um, again, vibrant, exciting kind of look that I'm going for here. So that was my uh, next step after putting the new sky in. And one of the reasons I do that is because um, I like to add a preset after I've put a new sky in because what I want to do is start getting the tones and the colors to sort of be balanced between the new sky and the original uh, rest of image. Because like this one, you know, shot in a brighter conditions and the sky's a little bit darker and colorful. And so what I don't want is there to be a huge disparity between, you know, here's this vibrant, colorful sunset sky, and then you kind of have the rest of the photo and, and they just don't look like they go together. So one of the reasons I go get a preset is because it'll just apply the color scheme, if you will, of the preset across the entire photo. And therefore, to me, it helps start making the, the, the new sky and the existing um, the rest of the photo to start blending together better and looking better. And so that's um, that's why I do that. So. Just a personal preference, I don't think you really have to. In fact, you don't have to use a preset, but I definitely recommend using some color filters and that sort of thing to start getting the tones and the light and the colors to sort of line up 
So preset or not, do something about it because generally it wouldn't match necessarily exactly. Um, and then I just had a few touch-up bits. Um, and these are just little minor adjustment layers, each for um, one little thing uh, or, you know, or a couple little things. Uh, the first one is if you look here at this sidewalk, which is concrete, which is generally gray in color, it's taken on a big b a blue color. It's turned really blue based on my presets and, and all the colors that I've been using. So I want to uh, go over here. I'm going to turn this on. And all I did is I went into the color filter and I dragged the saturation down and then I just painted it onto that section of the photo. So I can show you my mask. Let me click on that and there you go. So I just painted it right there and said, hey, color, go away, right? I don't want blue concrete. It's not, uh, you know, this isn't a kid's playground or something. This is like, you know, Italy. So um, it's an adult playground. Um, okay, so I uh, got rid of the color there, which I think worked. And then the next thing I did is I went and denoised the sky. So this was a new layer. And that's the thing about Aurora is you can add layers to customize the adjustments and brush them in. Whereas in Luminar, that's one of the differences in Luminar, you can do that on each filter on a single layer. So it's different in that way. Just a different approach. I just went in, slapped a bunch of denoise on it, and then I painted it into the sky with my brush. So it looks like that. So a little bit rough around here. Again, kind of an example. I was kind of motoring through it, but the point was I wanted to smooth out the sky and I wanted to be able to... Um, just, uh, um, you know, smooth it out, I guess. So um, if you want, you can also denoise other parts. Like sometimes, uh, depending on what the water looks like, especially if it's a long exposure and it's really fluid and smooth water, I might would do that in the water. In this case, I didn't want to. I like the little ripple on the boat and, you know, the reflections and how it kind of ripples. It just it looks real to me. That's what it looks like. Uh, so I wanted to leave that kind of look. And truthfully, I, I didn't shoot a long exposure, so I wasn't going to get a really smooth look anyway. Um, and I forgot to mention something a few minutes ago when I did that sky replacement. I mentioned in Luminar, you have a free transform tool that will allow you to move a photo, uh, a component of a photo around. So what I mean by that is you can go in and when I added that new sky, I could then scoot that sky up and kind of squish it so I could get more of that sky. If there were like clouds or patterns, I could have done that in Luminar, uh, and you can't do that in Aurora. So you don't have the free transform tool. Not really a big deal. In fact, the sky this way to me actually works really well, but um, that's one of the other differences between the two products. I'm bringing this up because I get asked a lot of what the differences are. And in fact, I did a video, I'll put a link here, comparing uh, Luminar and Aurora if you want to check that out. Okay, so Adina is the sky. Uh, and then I'm on to this next layer, and we're about done here. Um, what I did, if you look at the boats, they were really blue and now they're white again. So that's all it was. Let me do that one more time. Let me turn that off. Um, if you look at these boats, give that a second. They took on a blue hue, just like this thing did. Um, however, um, it wasn't just the color um, desaturation. I also used the basic slider here to uh, increase the whites. And that's why I didn't do it on the layer with the sidewalk over here, adjustment layer three, because I didn't use any white adjustments there. So that's why it's on a separate layer. But basically, once I took the saturation down and then bumped up the whites, the boats look white and shiny and awesome. Um, and I think I did it in a couple of other spots around the photo as well. Yeah, okay, so in the boats, on the motor, that boat over there, the sidewalk, and I even did it on that towel hanging on the top of that building. So um, just a way to bring back the whites using a color filter to desaturate that blue and then the basic panel to bump up the whites. To me, it looks more real, and I want that crisp, white, shiny thing. To me, it's it's like the kind of the anchor, that boat that says Nilo right here in the front. It's kind of the anchor of the photo. It kind of leads my eye in through the frame sort of thing, uh, and I didn't want a blue boat because it's not a blue boat. Um, and then the last thing is just a little desaturation that I did over here, and that's simply because I felt like that color was a little distracting and a little de uh, too saturated, so I'll show you that mask just right there. Now. Um, I don't know if the differences uh, um, are in the percentage. Yeah. Oh, okay. I did a little warm temperature as well. I was going to say I could have done that adjustment when I did this sidewalk, but I also warmed it up a little bit. So that's probably why I did it on a separate layer. And uh, that's really it. So that's a, that's a hopefully, well, not a quick, but um, hopefully a comprehensive walkthrough of this photo. Let me show you one more time the before. 
You can see it's got some barrel distortion. I shot this kind of wide. I'm looking here at 24 millimeters. That's my wide angle lens. So I got a little distortion on it. And then on top of that, um, fairly flat. Again, this is the center exposure from the bracket set. Fairly flat, not very exciting, boring sky. And the colors, um, although vibrant in real life, kind of flat. Um, and they look that way with a raw file. They need adjustments and that's okay. So I'm not necessarily picking on it. I'm just saying I wanted to go from something that's kind of flat and lifeless to make it something that's like attention getting. Um, now you may not like it. You might say, Jim, that you know that's clown vomit, way too much color. Totally cool. You're, you're right to say so. Uh, I don't care. That's fine. Um, you can easily go in and just stick a new layer and just take the saturation down overall. Maybe you take it down by 20% and it meets your needs. That's cool. Um, I just uh, I just wanted to do it this way. So anyway, that is how um, Aurora HDR works. And to me, that's the power of Aurora, which is really comes down to the layers functionality so that you can do all these custom adjustments. You can add new skies. You can do a lot of different cool and fun stuff with Aurora. And that's how it goes, my friends. I hope that it was helpful. Uh, like the channel, play, or what's it called? Subscribe. I should know these things. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit, hit like, share it with your friends, uh, and don't hesitate to leave me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll be back soon with another one. And until then, adios.